<clears throat> Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel. Now you got quite a problem if you hate Israel. You're against the Jews, the anti-Semitic. Because the God of the Bible is the Holy One of Israel. The who? You know, we're a Christian organization, but we hate the Jews. Do, 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 do. In returning and rest, you find that rest in Hebrews, shall ye be saved. Now that's the millennium. That's the second advent into the millennium, the nation of Israel. In quietness, in confidence, does it save? Quietness, confidence, that's the millennium, shall be your strength, and you would not. Now, the life of the children of Israel, from the time that God brought them out of Egypt, and when they entered the, into Palestine, the land that God's given them, that's what the purpose of Israel was. God said, listen, I'll tell you what. There are seven days in a week. I want you to take the seventh day. I want you to relax. And no, I don't want you to do nothing. I don't even want you to cook anything on the stove. And Israel said, nope, going to work, going to do whatever we want to do. You realize one of the sins of, of Judah going into Babylon in captivity was they did not value the Sabbath. They did not value the seventh year Sabbath. And all that is, you know, putting trust in God to take care of you. But ye said, the Jews said, no. Well, give them honest. I thought they said in, in Exodus, Moses said, you know, whatever the Lord tells us to do, we will do. And then later on, no. We will flee upon horses. Well, that's not quietness. That's not confidence. Therefore shall ye flee. All right, you want to flee? God says, okay, flee. <laughs> now, is God unreasonable? And they'll say, well, well Stolly Stol preacher, you know, wherever I am with me, why are there so many churches? Why are there so many religions? You want to worship Mary, the, the queen of heaven? There you go. My Bible says, the word of God says, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is God. You don't want to believe in God? Okay, I'll give you this religion. And what is a sorry truth of our holy and righteous God is, he'll give you exactly what you want, even though it's wrong, because that's what you want. If you want pagan holidays, you can find churches that will enjoy the pagan holidays, though they're wrong. And then the churches will get up there and say they're right. And at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, either one, God will say, you're wrong. Well, well I did. I said, people told you. I sent you history. I, but you did not want to listen. Isaiah. <laughs> Duh. We will ride upon the swift. We're, we're out of here. We're quick. That's what it means. We're on the run. <clears throat> Therefore shall they that pursue thee be swift. All right. You want to be quick? Uh, I'll send somebody to pursue you. Ahab wanted a lying spirit, a lying prophet. God said, okay, uh, anybody here in heaven want to be? Uh, I'll go. That's free will. All right, you want a government that's run by sin and not by the... There you go. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one. That's Deuteronomy 28, 25. One guy steps up to the plate and a thousand run. At the rebuke of five shall ye flee till ye... Ye be left as a beacon on top of a mountain, as an ensign on the hill. 
Does that sound familiar? I let my light shine. Who's, who, who is God talking to? The church? No, he's not. He's talking to a bunch of Jews that are fleeing. You're like a light. I can't. <coughs> I'm a light. I'm a candle. That's Matthew. That's not written to the Christian. Rightly divide or you're going to be made ashamed. Imagine all the people, and there's a lot of people come up to me, I let my light shine. Imagine the great white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ, wherever they go. Imagine God, Jesus Christ, you were a light. All right, let's see how many times they lit that cigarette up. Oh, yeah, there's their light. Let's see how many times they held up in their hand the light beer. Oh, yeah, that's a light. And therefore, therefore, will the Lord wait. God is patient. I am not. Patience is one of my sins. God is, God is long-suffering. That he may be gracious unto you, the Jews. The subject is the Jews. God says, I'll wait. I'll give you the entire church age period. I'll give you seven years tribulation period. Three and a half in the last of the tribulation period will be the great tribulation. And then my son will come back and he'll get you. I'll wait. And we don't even know how long the church age is going to be. And therefore, again, therefore, will he, God, be exalted by the Jewish people? He's not exalted today by the Jews. If God were to be exalted by the Jews, it would be the exaltation of Jesus Christ, who is God. He may have mercy upon you again, the Jewish. That's the millennium. Why is not the millennium happening now? Because we'll flee on horses. We'll be swift. No, we're not going to listen to you, God. Now, just take that aspect of what the Christian and the church's attitude towards God. Study to show thyself approved. No, I don't have time to read. I don't read the Old Testament. In which Bible do I read? Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Will you come to church Sunday morning? Invite the people to come to church Sunday morning. When Jesus said, go out and preach the gospel, invite them into churches not preaching the gospel. And God, God's in it. Uh, just let them do what they're going to do. I'll send them a few men that are going to be faithful to the word. They have the King James Bible. And they'll be at a loss at the, at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. And they get aggravated when you got preachers like me. that step up to the plate. And I don't hit them with, with I don't hit the ball with the bat. I hit them with the bat. For the Lord God is of judgment. Yeah, we got a loving God. But the world's got too much of the love of God being free. They don't have the judgment of God. Very rare is the word hell mentioned in churches today. Hell is the judgment of God. What is the judgment of hell? You rejected my son. John the Baptist goes to say that hell is the wrath of God. But that's not that's not your lovely, lovely Christmas and Easter kind of message to people of the world. God is love. And for God so loved the world this past tense. Blessed are all they that wait on him. I think I I think I read that somewhere. And I I had that problem. I have a problem with patience. For the people, well, gee, I wonder who the people are. So, BC 713, uh, must be Americans. 
Israel shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Gee, God even tells you where Zion is there. So let me ask you a question. Why is there a lot of Zion churches, especially in Daytona Beach, Florida? This is not Jerusalem. Oh, somebody's trying to steal something from the Jews. That's like Baptist churches being called temple. Your body's the temple, not the building. Thou shalt weep no more. In the millennium, right now they're weeping. <laughs> he, God, will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. <coughs> Then at the in the tribulation period, at the end of this trip, they're going to be crying all right. When he, God, shall he hear it, he will answer thee. And the answer will be the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the second time. Which will be in anger against the nations that were against the Jews. And through the Lord give you the bread of adversity. Troubles, trials, tribulations, and all kinds of problems the Jews have had. And the water's affliction, that's prison food. When they locked Jeremiah up, they so give him bread and affliction and water. And a lot of Jews have been prison, been concentration camps. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into the corner anymore. They're still teachers. They still teach the law, but they're not completely teaching what they ought to be teaching. But they're still teachers. That's the rabbi. Removed to the corner anymore. That's funny. When I grew up as a child, usually when we were bad children, we were sent to the corner. I don't know what happens today. I didn't know that was Bible, but there it is. They used to put a dunce hat on us. <laughs> really ruin our character. But that, we also had to go sit with the girls. Yeah, I went to church where there was actually the girls sat on one side and the boys sat on the other side. And the boys were bad. We had to move over to the girls' side. <laughs> but thy eyes shall see thy teachers. <clears throat> thy ears shall hear a word behind thee. Now watch this one. All right, here comes the word. This is the way. I wonder who they're talking about. A word that is speaking, and the word says the way. John chapter 1 and John chapter 14. There it is. Walk ye in it. So what's one of the things that I preach often at the uh, Saturday uh, with the street preaching? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. And any Jew that walks by, any Hebrew that walks by, I'm telling them in the book of Isaiah, the way is Jehovah, the way is the Messiah. You better get walking the way he tells you to believe on him. And the Gentiles, when ye turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left, God will guide you. You know, I wish I had that voice. But we live by faith. We live by the Bible. And many times, if you read Fox's book, <coughs> excuse me, if you read uh, Pilgrim's Progress, Christian went off on many paths that were wrong. Because there wasn't a voice, go straight, turn to the right. Turn to the right again. All right, now go straight again. Now, that voice does not happen to the Christian. We're going to walk by faith. Now, a lot of times, all right, when we come up to a path and there's, all right, a sinful way and there's a, okay, we, we know which way to take. Sometimes we don't do the right way. But when we step out by faith, there's no voice. That's the way to go. And there are times in my Christian walk, I'm like, Lord, is this where you want me? Am I doing what you want me to do? And I don't hear a voice from heaven. But I got to stay in the book. 
In the millennium, you're going to hear that voice. How are you going to hear that voice? Because Jesus is seated at David's throne, telling them, Ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver. Shows you what God thinks about images and idolatry. You're going to defile it. And the ornament. What's the ornament? What, what's that word associated itself with today? Christmas. Christmas ornaments. So what about Christmas ornaments? You're going to defile them of thy molten images of gold. And there are many ornaments on the tree and decoration of, of, of Christmas, of a snowman, of Santa, of stars and reindeer and uh, Jesus and the, the, the three wise men. And God told the Jew, you're going to defile that stuff. You know, you know, one of the things of defiling that stuff is you put it on the ground and you piss on it. Bible word. One of the kings did that. And you do other natural things from the other side on it. You take your bathroom on that defiles. And then you burn it to pieces like Moses did with the golden calf. Yeah, I wonder if he knew how to spell chicken. Now watch this. This is what God thinks of images. And of thy molten images go, thou shalt cast them away as a menstruous cloth. <laughs> what does God think about your image? Well, we got aids of worship. Do you know what that cloth, do you know when you throw that cloth away? You don't take it out of the package and then throw it in the garbage unless it's been tampered with. But pretty much you don't throw it in the garbage. A woman takes it out, breaks it out, and uses it. And then what she do when it's been used? She throws it in the garbage. God says that is just like your images and your ornaments. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. And then when a woman has her time a month, throw it in the garbage. Isn't God playing? I bet you that's changed in modern Bibles. Thou shalt say unto it the images. Get the heads. Get out of here. Get that. Get it out of here. The Bible says at the second coming, they're going to cast their idols and images to the bats, to the moles. Then shall he give the rain of thy seed. This is at the second advent. This is into the millennium. This is the time of the latter and early rain. There's been no rain in the tribulation period. And what water is left over is dried up, is turned to blood. This is the blessing of the Jewish people in their land. Here's the rain. Watch for a day of darkness. Watch for a day of clouds. Watch for the latter rain. Watch for the moon to be as blood, the sun to be darkened. That's the seventh year of the tribulation period going to the second advent, going into the millennium. <clears throat> and thou shalt sow the ground with all. In the millennium, they're going to plant and harvest and husbandmen. <clears throat> and the bread of the increase of the earth, millennium, and it shall be fat and plenteous in the millennium. In that day, pay attention, shall the cattle feed and large pastures. There's going to be cattle for them to bring the sacrifice in the temple before the Lord Jesus Christ, and there'll be hamburger. And you won't have the golden arches that's been defiled. And you won't have a cow that doesn't know how to smell chicken that will be defiled. And you won't have a king burger because Jesus Christ is the king of kings. That's interesting. The oxen likewise and the young asses that ear the ground shall eat clean provider. Fresh and clean is what it's saying. Which halt been whittled with the shovel and with the fan. And that's how it's harvested. And there shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill no images and idolatry. 
No worship of fallen gods. Watch. Rivers and streams of water in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. There's going to be great rain. There's going to be rivers. There's going to be bottles of water. There's going to be great uh, harvesting, great fields and just animals and joyful time. And I'll have a whole lot with a whole vast of tomatoes. Plant a tomato and the tomato comes up and it's right there red and ready. I think that was Amos. Moreover, now watch, now watch the rightly divide. There's a difference between the moon and sun of the tribulation period and the moon and the sun in the millennium. In the moon of the, and the sun in the tribulation period, it goes dark. In the moon and the sun in the millennium. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. That's bright. And the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. And you're not going to get cancer. And you're not going to get sunburn. What is that? That's the light of Jesus Christ. Jerusalem is going to sparkle like the light on a, on a mountain. And Jerusalem will be the only mountain in the millennium. And man, it's going to glow. That's why that temple was made by gold of Solomon. Everything was gold. When the sun came up, it was the light in that place, and the Gentiles and everybody said, "Hey, that's God. That's where you. That's where you go to God." Now the churches say, to, "You know, come to our church and you'll meet God." Well, which one? There's 26 churches on your street, and you got 26 different doctrines, and you got 26 different ways. But in the in the in the Old Testament, one city, one God, and there it is. What do you think uh, the the Queen of Sheba came for? She came to meet God. What do you think the Ethiopian eunuch came? He came to meet God. That's what they want for the churches. But a lot of churches today, you don't meet God. You meet man, and the devil. And in this church age, you meet man and the devil and Jesus Christ. When you walk in the in the lives of the same church age, you walk right by Jesus Christ into man and the devil. Because Jesus Christ is outside. We're not the church of the open door no more. We got fragments of that church, but... In the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. That's millennium. Here comes second advent. You see how God, okay, millennium, 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 second advent. That's out of order. That's why you got to study to show this super approved under God. You know, I forget what that book was, that religious book growing up, was, you know, Anxiety, page 87. Oh, okay. Marriage Troubles, page 101. Ooh, okay. It was a religious book. I forgot what it was. And they would advertise, whatever problems you have, page 37. Ooh, that ain't like that in the Bible. You got to rightly divide. I mean, you got to look. Okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's not for the church. But there's principles for the church, but there's not doctrine for the church. You see, when you look at the scriptures, you got three aspects of the scriptures. Historical. We're reading historical evidence right now. And many Christians don't know history or church history. Number two spiritualized i can take isaiah and i can apply it to the church age spiritualized to see the condition and the condition of the church i can take something out of the old testament and i can spiritually apply a message to a christian on how to live doctrinal not not all good spiritual preaching makes doctrinal and not all doctrinal teaching makes good spiritual application. 
Isaiah, there's no church. <coughs> there's no America. But I can spiritually apply it, but doctrinally, what is it saying? And when you take doctrinally, there's three applications, three of them, uh, for doctrine. Who is it written to? Is it written to the Jewish people? Is it written to the Gentiles? Is it written to the church? Or is it written to the whole world? And then another question you got to ask yourself, Dr. Wayne, when was it written? Behold, the name of the Lord cometh from afar, heaven, burning with his anger, Rome, uh, Revelation 19. And the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation and his tongue as a devouring fire. That's that sword. The second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ is the anger of God. I had to correct somebody in my family. I'm waiting for the day of the Lord. Can't wait for the... Oh, Grandma, the day of the Lord is darkness. The day of the Lord is what we're reading about. We don't want the day of the Lord. And if we're saved, we're not going to see the day of the Lord. We're going to be behind the day of the Lord, coming back after Jesus and his breath. As an overflowing stream and reach to the mist of the neck, the swift uh, to sift, like you do with flour, the nations with the sleeve of vanity. How I marked my Bible. What's that? Jesus is going to divide the nations, the goat nations, and the sheep nations. The goat nations go into hell, and the sheep nations go into. To, uh, go into the millennium on their salvation of how they treated the Jew. And they don't even know what they're doing. <laughs> the church is not doing that today. All are welcome. And then many churches get up Sunday mornings and they feed the goats and entertain the goats and the sheep are starving, starving to death. And the preaching pastors and church and the church rulership of that church will be at fault before Jesus Christ. And there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people, like, like an animal, causing them to err. Ye shall have a song, as in the night, when the holy solemnity, that's a feast, that's a... Uh, uh, celebration time is kept and the gladness of heart as when one goeth with a pipe musical instrument to come unto the mountain of the Lord millennium to the mighty one of Israel Jesus Christ and the Jehovah witnesses say that Jesus is not God there he is there's Jesus God ain't coming down without Jesus Christ to take the throne of David Second Advent, the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and shall show the light, <coughs> the lightning down his arm. That's not that lamb that was born. That's the lion of the tribe of Judah and the indignation of his anger. With the flame of devouring fire, fire, Revelation 19, and the scattering sheep and goats and the tempest and the hailstorms. Second Advent, for th through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down, the Antichrist. How dare you say that the Antichrist is a type of, I mean, the Assyrian is a type of Antichrist. There it is. And when you read Revelation 19, the Antichrist and the false prophet is cast into the lake of fire. Which smote him with a rod. Go back and read the sepulchre of Jesus Christ, Revelation 19. <clears throat> and every place where the grounded staff shall pass, that staff is an instrument of the shepherd, our chief shepherd, and the Lord shall lay upon him. 
the Assyrian. Thy rod and thy staff is the devil. Somehow, thy rod and staff shall comfort me. Somehow the devil and, and the Antichrist is going to comfort the, the Jews somehow. I don't understand that. Unless they get in the scripture and say, hey, this is where we are in the tribulation period. Pretty soon the Messiah is coming. <laughs> that may be a way. <clears throat> he shall be with tabrets and harps, music, and the battles of shaking will he fight with it. For Tophet is, is ordained of old. <clears throat> and the, the Tophet is the valley of, of Henan. It's, it's, it's just not a good place. For the king is prepared. He has made it deep and wide, large. And the pile thereof is fire and much wood. There is going to be a place of fire in this earth in the millennium. The breath of the Lord, like the stream of brimstone, does kindle it. And that fire may open up into hell. And if you do sin and you're wicked in the millennium, they'll pick you up and throw you into that fire. <laughs> Literal. <laughs> you're not having that happen today. Listen, when I preach on the streets, I say about fire, there, there, there's no burning pit to say, you know, God says, listen, by faith. You believe that preacher by faith or you don't believe that preacher by faith. In the millennium, there's no faith at all. Did you just see what they did to Joel? What? What did they do to Joel? Man, that guy, man, he, he sinned against Jesus and they picked him up and he threw him in that fire. Whoa, I better not. There's a great difference between the ages. We are in the age of faith and grace. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. <clears throat> 